Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Live. My guest today is Emmanuel Etier, director, producer, and author. He has written and directed the Oneness Collection, six documentaries for a conscious humanity together with actress Sharon Stone. He directed several pictures before completing the peace documentary, The Invocation, narrated by Sharon Stone and starring Desmond Tutu, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Deepak Chopra, as well as worldwide peace activists. For the last 25 years, Emmanuel has been a successful music and film journalist for rock and roll magazines and many French TV networks. He is the founding president of the Rotary E-Club of World Peace and a part of the United Nations Association. Don't go away. I'll be right back with Emmanuel Etier. Welcome, Emmanuel. This is your second appearance. I'm so happy to have you back. Thank you, Gary. I'm so <laughs> glad to be back. Yes. Alive and rocking after <laughs> this crazy three years of nonsense. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you are uh, the peacemaker of the world, and I know that you're always out there uh, with your films and doing many, many Im incredible things for people to enlighten them, but also to open up people's awareness um, and and I know that you you are trying to really bring peace in the world what would you define uh, the word peace for most people well you know there's a saying to prepare peace you have to prepare for war you know that that famous quote from Lao Tse well we have to debunk that no no to prepare for peace you need to prepare for peace you need to become peace peace in action which are actually the last three words of the first documentary I directed uh, the invocation and that was actually created a thought that was created by Sean Stone and and it, it made total sense you know peace is an action peace is a verb it's not about blah 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 it's not about the crystal and the guru vis and the ritual and going to the Himalayas and uh, making one with the universe that, that's blah blah you know enough of blah blah we need action show me you love me by your action you know don't say I love you say do it do it you know i think that's a problem is people hide behind words uh, you know they get lost in uh, endless uh, negotiation and mediation and blah 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 and uh, dissertation and and now it's a time of action you know we, we've we've seen it for the last three years if we didn't have some serious action we would still be stuck at home thank god we're back and so if, to move forward we need to become peace in action. That's that. And remember, peace is a verb. It's not just a word. And, and how do we define or discover true happiness and the balance of peace? I mean, that's the question. That's, that's the eternal like, uh, you know, question. What is happiness? What is the meaning of life? Well, I've come to the conclusion, and you know, it's based on 25 years roaming the world, hanging out with the Dalai Lama, the Deepak Chopra, the Gary Queen, uh, Sean Stone, and, and so many other amazing geniuses. And really, for me, uh, the meaning of life and happiness is I think, therefore I am, therefore I do. So, the I think, therefore I am, you know, that's a French, you know, quote, but. Already right there, it's a foundation because to reach happiness and to reach and find the meaning of your life, you need to think. You need to evaluate within what you think you are made for. What is this card of game that was given to you, uh, this DNA, and what are you going to do with it? What are you going to embody with it? So I think then I am. I'm, I'm becoming that thought. So the last step is going to be to put it in action. So therefore, I do. And when you find truly a purpose for your life, what you're made for, whatever it is, you know, uh, a great podcaster, a great peacemaker, a great surgeon, a great anything, a great carpenter, a great teacher, when you find that is what you're made of and why you're made of, 
that is giving a meaning to your life and that is giving completion and oneness to your life the reason why we have an existentialist crisis now and midlife crisis with so many people and you could start at, at 15 and, and then you induce in drugs and you might never get out of it or it start at 45 and you become these narcissistic creatures showing their butt all over the internet and you never get out of it so midlife crisis can happen anytime but it happens happens to people who have missed the point of their life, who have missed the meaning of their life. They've, they've been sidetracked. Uh, the, the, there's been a, a really uh, an accumulation of frustration, of regret, uh, of disillusion, and they snap. And then they're going to express that in the, the worst way possible by either self destroying themselves and destroying the environment around them, their family, uh, their friend. Um, so really, it's very important to think, be and then do, you know, that's your meaning of life. And that's and that's happiness. You know, it's very simple. Happiness is about being that about having founding the, the true meaning of your life. But I think we have to look at life, Emmanuel, as it's a school, and I know people mm -hmm. are thrown th big things daily or weekly that are sometimes overwhelming, and you're going, why is that happening to me? What is that all about? Basically, I think the thing we have to look at it, it's, uh, it, it's having breakthroughs, not breakdowns, mm -hmm. and it's hard because we're in situations of relationships or work situations that you've had for many years and then all of a sudden the rug is pulled under from you and you have to really be uh, confident that no matter what is happening that you will overcome it and really search for becoming the miracle in your life and not letting it take you down because if you let things take you down it will destroy you and I think peace and action is really taking action to be the best that you can and you're a powerful person Emmanuel and I know you were running for president in France last year and you'll do it again when it's time but I think I think the thing that is important is that the films that you're making are all about what society is going through and what we've gone through and your latest one uh, the last one was Guns, Bombs, and War, a love story. What yeah. was, what well, was well, basically, Guns, Bombs, and War was really a study of our inner violence and inner, inner anger. And that was a great movie because it was at the time where with Trump, obviously, we went through a lot of violence <laughs> examination and self-anger management situation. And uh, we haven't moved forward that much but now to complement that documentary I just started one actually it's going to be started today with uh, the first interview after this interview being with you it's called the growth of man and I think we are in a key key moment in uh, in our humanity in, uh, in our history where men are really the one that needs some healing right now. You know, we, we, we worried about the women. We gave them great empowerment. I did with a movie called Femme Women Healing the World that I produced with Sean Stone. So it's great. We have made a lot of progresses with women and, and I hope they appreciate all the effort that we men have done. But now look at us men. We are in shit, excuse my French language. We really are in a critical situation. You know, 80% of the violence, the suicide, the terrorist act of terrorism, the mass shooting, it's us, it's men, it's always men. You know, and, and even now, you know, there's the assumption that all men are, are rapists and pedophile. It's, it's horrible the way we are treated. So, you know, I'm doing a movie called The Growth of Men, The Growth, Growing, because I think, yes, we need to grow, but not grow only ourselves as men, as supermen, but society needs to grow and to accept us a little bit better because we have been pushed aside like women were pushed aside for centuries. So I get it, you know, but hey, stop trying to replace patriarchy by matriarchy. It's not going to change anything. You're, you're replacing, replacing a form of racism and, uh, and fascism by another one. So that's not going to work. So it's really about finding the, the partnership situation between both gender, you know. And because, again, you, you know, oneness doesn't have a gender. 
one less doesn't have a, a race a color you know we are all complementary you know eight billion of us we are all fantastic geniuses and we are all there to serve each other purpose to serve each other meaning of life to serve each other happiness so we need to move into that new frame of thinking and doing again the doing is really important don't get stuck in your thought don't get stuck in your prayer stop building in believe in Santa Claus. I see that often and often. Oh, I believe in my little crystal, in my tarot card, in my moonshine, in my daddy. Cool, it's okay, but realize, you know, it's not real totally, because if it was real, you know, when you go to Peru and you've got the best crystal, well, you're surrounded by all this poverty and this misery and, and this distress. So, do, and, and you go to India, it's the same. You know, you, you've got all these tourists going over there, hanging out with the Dalai Lama. Yeah, and, and what do you do with that poverty? You know, you, we have 8 billion people on this planet. 7 billion are living in total poverty, in total distress. So stop believing in Santa Claus and stop believing in the own Santa Claus that you're creating for yourself. Acquire faith. Faith is a verb that comes from trusting. You know, faith is fidere in Latin, and that's a pagan verb, and it's to trust. So find this inner trust. And how do you find that? By re-engaging, daring to re-engage your relationship with others. Because we are not in relationship now. Nobody is in relationship. We are narcissistically taking pictures of ourselves, guilty I am the first, uh, posting them, look at me, look at me, look at me, me, myself, and I, me, myself, and I, me, myself, and I. Okay, but, so we have a society of eight billion me, myself, and I? Who's going to do the healing? Who's going to do the saving? It's me, myself, and we. I am because we are. I am because we are. So stop looking at your butt 24 seven. And worse, stop begging for this attention. You're not going to get the real love. You're going to get, actually, you're going to create an instinct, a predator instinct of people wanting to consume you, to sleep with you, to use more your money. They're not there to love you. They are there to use you, to abuse you, to eat you raw. So wake up. And, and I think that comes to the full stop point of it comes down to love, self-love, because at the end of the day, that is all there is in the world. And I know you've traveled all over the world and seen so many things and people and poverty and different cultures. What has been the most shocking to you when you went to that country and you said, wow? Well, it's everywhere. I, honestly, every country today is very alike other than the language that's different, the accent, the food, the outside appearance of the people but we are all in the love crisis right now and there are two things there is i'm in love and i love and the difference is very clear when you say i'm in love it's you believe in santa claus you meet this young man and he's so fantastic and because i live with my old husband who's boring with whom i've been with for 20 years oh my god it's such a brief or brief air so i'm in love oh he's fantastic but no, you need to move to love. And when you love, you embrace the good and the bad in everybody. And right now, we're not in a society that says, I love. We're in a society, I, I want to be in love. Oh, I want to be in love. I want to be hug. I want to, to be love for myself. That's not love. That's fucking believing in Santa Claus again. <laughs> I think Wake we, up, yeah, yeah. Santa Claus doesn't <laughs> exist. What exists is each other love. And love is not perfect. Love is the imperfectness of perfectness. You know, it's a good and the bad at once. It's a white and the black. It's a light and the darkness. It's, it's oneness. So yeah. when I look at Gary and I say, I love you, it's because I know Gary for 20 years. And I know the great thing about Gary. And I, there's a few things that flows like we all have. And I'm like, well, who cares? I'm focusing on the great thing. So that's, that's a different... When you are in love, you're just infatuated. You're blind, like an idiot. Mm -hmm. When you love, you're in full consciousness. You're full aware of everything, the good and the bad. But you focus on the good because obviously the good helps moving forward. If you focus on the bad and on the flaws of each other, we, we're never going to stop poking at each other. Oh, look at him. He's got such a stupid accent. Oh, look at him. He dresses like an idiot. Oh, look at him. He's a bit fat. Oh, look at him. He hasn't invested in Bitcoin when you, he should have. You know, who cares? 
What's great about that man? What's great about that woman? Focus on the good. And, and I think it starts with each individual learning to love themselves first, because if you cannot love yourself first, you will be a reflection of everything around you that does not love you. And I think so many people in life all over the world are looking for just all the same thing. They just want to feel love, they want to be secure, but they have a false idea of what love is or they don't know what love is in their country. It's a, it's a different uh, analogy for each country, but would you say that um, how can people uh, deepen our experience to change? What is, what is the It's solution? very clear. You just said it. You know, you're talking about love yourself. Love yourself is an ego trap. Love yourself f make you keep staying in this position of me, myself, and I. It's the illusion that if I love myself and I focus on myself, everything is solved. No, that's the trap. That's the ego trap. That's when you are not moving forward. Again, that's when you end up thinking only about yourself. So stop thinking about yourself and think about the other. Well, I, I am because we are. When you love yourself, you will reflect but that not, with others. But not today in our society. Today in our society, the instinct is you have these legions of people who love themselves so much. That's all they do. Right, they true. love themselves and they are incapable of loving the others. They right. say they do it, but they don't. Yeah. It goes back to them all the time. You know, they, they, they don't. They keep it for themselves. They keep the money. They keep the love. They keep, they keep it for themselves. I see it all the time. Young people, older people, married couples, single people. We are living in a world because of this, the construct of social media have isolated us more than ever. You do a search on Instagram. All you see is beautiful men and women showing their butt. Constantly look at me. Who I love so much myself. I've got this Botox injection. I'm, I'm the cutest of all. No, you're just one of the cutest of all. That doesn't exist, the cutest of all. <laughs> exactly. You know, so it's, it's very important, again, the, the, the awakening now mm. is to move from the love myself to love the whole world. You know, and again, I am because we are. So realize that your happiness is not coming only from you. This is just the foundation. You know, it's like when people saying, oh, I'm a religious person. Oh, wow, you read the Bible, so suddenly you're religious. Yeah, that's a, that's a foundation. But then you have to put that in action. Correct. Once you know, again, if it it's stays action. just a word, it's yeah. action. And action by act of love. Act of love, not just word of love. Don't say only... I love you to somebody, but mm. show them. Correct. Show them you're taking care of them. Show them you're paying their bills. Show them you are hugging them when they cry. Show them that you are their partner. Most people, they don't want to be in partnership. It's me, 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 me. I mm. see it all the time. I'm myself a victim of that. Mm. So, mm. and I'm a guilty sometimes of that too. Of course, you know, we are, we're all victims and guilt yeah. parties at one point, you know. I know you've interviewed a lot of celebrities, political people uh, around the world and in Hollywood and in different countries. Um, who has been the most difficult interview for you? Oh, uh, and, and, you know, Can again, you say? <laughs> because by what I said that I don't like to focus on the negative, yeah. it's, it's really hard because, again, usually... Uh, I, I forget as soon as soon as I have a bad experience, I try to to move forward. Mm -hmm. yeah, but if, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I go in dark places and have dark thoughts about myself. Even so, I love myself. Um, but to answer your question, a couple of times I was, especially on the first documentary, because maybe I wasn't knowing very well what I was doing. You know, I approached certain individual. I don't want to mention name, but it was. I can say why it took place. I remember one place in Jerusalem. And we were doing the documentary on oneness, God, love, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. And, and I go to this house uh, where uh, the gentleman was really uh, an extreme uh, East in his view. And I was with somebody on my side who was from the opposite religion. And that gentleman didn't want my friend to come in. 
uh, that gentleman really just uh, was so difficult because every time I was trying to be positive about the notion of oneness and how can we coexist together, he was saying, no, 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 no. All these people, like your friend, they need to get out of Jerusalem. This, the, nothing will work until they are all out. You know, it was so disgusting. So for me, the, a difficult interview is not so much to try to get an answer from you, but it's to try to get a constructive, humanitarian-driven answer. It's sad to me, and thank God it's a min minority of people, but they have a loud voice. Voice. Uh, there are so many people who are so negative, and they create so much toxicity. Look at Trump. There, there aren't so many Trump, but just one Trump, one idiot, creates so much negativity, so much toxicity. You know, and at the same time, again, economically, uh, I, I really like certain things he did. But as a human being, as a spirit, and spirit comes from espiritu, which means the breath. So what he breathed onto us was division, was anger, was uh, deception, was uh, darkness. You cannot breathe to each other that type of energy. We have to breathe love. And love is constructive. Love is expansion. Love it all. And mm -hmm. all is love. What does the soul mean to you? Hmm? The soul. What is that definition? Well, soul, spirit, it's very similar. You know, again, it's that part of us that is the original breath. You know, it's that original essence of us. You know, again, the, the problem is today, more than ever, we have so many charlatans trying to use words to to intoxicate you and to intimidate you and to keep you again into a frame of mind where you're going to end up believing Santa Claus and you're going to become a follower of Sadhguru or Deepak Chopra or Michael Beckwith. Don't become a follower of anybody. Don't become even a follower of Jesus Christ. Embrace Jesus Christ. Embrace Deepak Chopra. But remember, you're your own free man or free woman. You are as brilliant as they are. The only chance they had in their life is that they, are, they seem to be a little bit ahead of the game where they seem to be a bit more awakened. They seem to be a little bit richer, materialistically speaking. That doesn't mean they are a better man or a better woman or Miriam Williamson or whatever, or Shanston. These are people who worked hard at it, but are, were very lucky. I've been working at it for 25. Have I been very lucky? No, I'm still a poor man. So my material life never materialized. But spiritually, look at that energy, that force, that vision, this word that nobody heard until I just said them. You know, people always recycle the same blah, blah, blah. I try not to recycle the same blah, blah, blah. I try to create a new narration, a new narrative so we can move forward. That so we can be really peace in action. That's different. When you become a follower of somebody, you're just going to rehash the same thing. You're going to start repeating the same word of Deepak Chopra, of Jesus Christ, of uh, Buddha. Who need that? Great. Learn from it. Move on. Create your own narration, your own words, your own action. And then you are a free man. You know, the, the real revolution is a revolution of the soul, of the spirit, of the mind. And we're not there yet. We are stuck. And the reason we are stuck is because, again, all these social medias, all these platforms have even more separated us from each other. We are not connected anymore. It's an illusion. We, it's, it's horrible. We have become ghosts in the machine. We, and that's why, you know, when they say, oh, he ghosted me. Well, yeah, you ghosted yourself. We all ghost each other. It's, it's horrible. We need to become alive again. Who has influenced you the most in your life? Well, one. Uh, and that's, that's the answer, one. And one is what? It's the association of every person I meet. You, uh, uh, my wife, my kids, my parents. You know, I think my wife, in spite of some uh, uh, tough time we are going through right now, uh, she has inspired me the most, probably, because she's the closest to me. Mm -hmm. She's someone that I, I love without any thinking. In any, I just impulsively uh, try to serve her and adore her and, and, and love her. So that, that might be, and that might be the most difficult. If you could go back in time, Emmanuel, and meet or speak to someone, who would it be and what would you ask? 
Good question. Well, you know, I mean, I'm, like everybody, I'm fascinated by big spiritual figures. So I would say definitely Jesus Christ. It's like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, are, you were a punk, man. And that's why you got crucified, because you walked the system. And the rabbis and the Romans and all the fascists, they didn't like that. That's really why you got crucified, because you, you dare to say, screw that stuff. I mean, are you kidding? Look at how you treat each other. It, it, we cannot be in slave we cannot live our life as slave so i love to talk with a dude and go back and and figure out and and put and try to understand what what he missed and why he got crucified you know uh, so that's one you know i mean I don't know. I mean, you know, because I live in Hollywood, I always say, you know, I love to hang out with Marilyn Monroe. She seems like it's somebody that ha know a lot about the dark history of America and the world because she's been everywhere and, and slept with everybody. So <laughs> good for her. I'm sure she has a lot of truth to talk about. And I love to talk about you with you, Marilyn. You know, it's like, what's going on in, know, in the head of all these guys? You know, <laughs> we, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, that's that's two two figure historical figures that are so opposite in terms of everything you know and at the same time they they join hips you know look uh, Christ was uh, uh, supposedly a, a lover of the thief of the prostitute Marilyn was super generous with everybody she even married a, a crazy writer who was not particularly attractive so it shows how much of an, an insane beautiful soul she was misunderstood used abused mm -hmm. you know uh, it's 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 so sad to me to see the, 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 the waste of life, um, the life taken uh, away from us so quickly and shortly. Look, Marilyn died at what, in her 30s? Mm. Uh, Jesus Christ supposedly at the same time. I say supposedly because we don't have really historical records. So, uh, but still, it's like it's young life that were, that were so rich, that had so much power, influence, understanding, love, love. And they were taken away from us. So I, I love to, yeah, to visit them and say, hey, what did I miss? What did I didn't understand from you? What, what can we do better? Because it seems that right now we are still repeating the, the, the same sadness, the same mm -hmm. sad story. We Look, I started my movies maybe 20 years ago now, uh, easy, uh, my documentaries. And if you watch The Invocation, uh, and you and I did a book about it, which was done really almost 20 years ago, uh, you, you, you think we just did it. Correct. <laughs> the world hasn't moved forward. It's the same crap. It's the same mm -hmm. chaos. It's actually, honestly, more misery, more war, more distress, more suicide. Enough. Aren't you tired of dying? Mm -hmm. I am. So when are we going to live? wake up, wake up stand and up, action. unite, <laughs> exactly. and live in oneness? Yeah. Become peace in action, please. Thank you, Emmanuel. It's so great to connect with you always. And if you'd like to find out more about Emmanuel, you can go to his website, which is posted above. And I wish you great success, great peace, continued just spreading the word. Amen. I love you, everybody. Just dare it. Become love in action. Not only peace, love. I'm Gary Quinn. Thank you for joining me today on this next episode of Ready, Set, Live. Until next time, stay well.